During the initial stage of computer network, the data transmission was possible only through the cable. That means every devices in that network must connect it to the network hub or network switch through a network cable. The communication between the devices was happening through this cable in the form of frames. So during that era, network communication has a dependency on the availability of the cable. At that time, most of the devices were using as a workstation. The portable devices are very rare at that time. One of the major problem at that time was that devices could not move from one location to another location so easily. Because if we wanted to move one device, we need to make sure there is a network cable connectivity available at the new location. All the device was being used in a stationary position. Then later on, what happened? The wireless access point has introduced. By using the wireless access point, it is proved that the network communication can happen even without a cable connectivity. The communication was possible without using a wire in the form of wireless. So by using the wireless, the mobile devices like laptop, mobile phone and wireless printer could able to communicate each other using the wireless access point. This changed the total concept of computer network at that time. In this chapter, we are going to talk about wireless access point. That changed the world of technology. Welcome to the world of wireless. Wireless Access Point Welcome to CCNA 200-301 Implementing and Administering Cisco Solutions Chapter Number 15 Wireless Access Points In this chapter we will understand the primary purpose and functions of wireless access point. We will discuss about the different Wi-Fi standards. Welcome to iRush Academy, an unlimited learning platform to enhance your skills. Subscribe to the channel for more videos. Now let's discuss about the primary functions of a wireless access point. The point number one. Wireless access point helps to communicate the data packets in the form of frames wirelessly. So basically the wireless access points are the network device like network hub and network switch. But one of the differences, the wireless access point doesn't have the Ethernet interfaces to connect the network devices using the cables. Moreover, they use the wireless technology to connect the network devices together unlike the network switch and network hub. So in the screen, we can see a network diagram where a network router is connected to internet. And there is a network switch which is connected to the network router. So in normal cases, we can connect the network devices like PC, laptop, printer to the network switch using the network cable so that they can communicate together. But what if we want to connect the wireless devices then we must install one wireless access point as shown in the picture. So this wireless access point is connected to the network switch. This wireless access point can send the traffic to the other devices which is coming inside its wireless range. So here what is the difference between this wireless access point and this switch? The functionality is almost same but the difference is the network switch has multiple Ethernet ports that allow to connect to the devices using a network cable but the wireless access point it doesn't have the ethernet interfaces instead it has the antennas which can broadcast the communication in the form of radio frequencies point number two wireless access point transmit across the radio frequency or rf channels you may be wondering how a wireless access point transmit the data because we know in network switch and network hub, the data transmission is happening through the network cable. That means the copper cable in the form of electric signal. But what about the wireless access point? In wireless access point, the transmission is happening through the radio frequency channel. For example, we all know radio frequency have multiple channel range. And this wireless access point use some specific channel range to transmit this data in the wireless form. So the devices which has connected to this wireless network, they can communicate through the radio channel. 
here another question arises what is the meaning of the channels the channels are indicate the slices of radio frequency so in this screen you can see a schematic diagram of 2.4 gigahertz rf channel here you can see multiple slices so each slice indicate the channel for example this is a channel and this is another channel and each slice is representing different different channels so this is the meaning of a channel in radio frequency so the access point is using some specific channel for the communication so whatever the devices that tune to this channel they can communicate with the wireless access point and do the data transmission now point number 3 wireless access point use 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radio frequencies so here i already mentioned radio frequency have a different different ranges and depending on the purpose it has restricted to multiple use depending on the purpose of use the frequency is restricted for some specific usage for example the wireless access point use the radio frequency in the range of 2.4 and 5 gigahertz so what about the other radio frequencies the other radio frequencies are used for multiple purpose same like radio communication satellite communication and military operation etc so this is the only allowed range in the radio frequency to use for wireless access point that is 2.4 and 5 gigahertz so what is the difference between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radio frequencies let's discuss about that a 2.4 gigahertz connection travel further at lower speed but the 5 gigahertz frequencies provide faster speed at short range so the choice of 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz will depend on where and how you use your wifi connection most so in this screen you can see the difference between the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz as we mentioned 2.4 gigahertz have lower data rate but it has a larger coverage area on the other hand 5 gigahertz has higher data rate but smaller coverage area so depend on the usage depend on the wifi devices that you are using you can choose the selection between 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz now the point number 4 wireless access point is a step forward in technology and back in efficiency what does it mean we all know the invention of wireless access point is made very big impact in the network communication we could able to use the network communication in the form of wireless without any network cable that is a good news and it advanced the technology but again it is back in efficiency what does it mean so there is a lot of difference between the communication happening in a network switch and the communication happening through wireless access point and what are those to discuss this scenario i call the image that showing in the screen in the screen we can see one network hub and four computers the pc1 is connected to the interface 1 pc2 is connected to interface 2 pc3 is connected to interface 3 and pc4 is connected to interface 4 of the network hub so how the devices are communicating through a network hub in network hub there is some concept called collision domain the collision domain is basically we can consider the path of the network traffic so in the case of a network hub there is only one collision domain is available this collision domain is shared with all interfaces of that network hub that means if any device in that network want to communicate they need to send the traffic through this collision domain but in the network hub there is a limitation only one device can send or receive the data at a time so that means if the pc1 want to send a data to pc2 it it use that collision domain but at the same time if pc3 want to send a data to pc4 then it cannot send at the same time collision happen so only one device can send or receive the data at same time the process is clear it is possible to only send or receive at a time so if pc1 is want to send some data to pc2 it can send but at the same time it cannot receive the data using that collision domain so this is the one of the restriction of the network hub now what if we replace the network hub and if it is a network switch then what is the difference if it is a network switch it has multiple collision domain that means in a network switch each interface has its own collision domain it is not shared with multiple devices for example if one device connected to the interface number 1 that device can access the entire collision domain that associated with that interface it doesn't collide with any other collision domain because switch has multiple collision domain for each interface 
another difference is the device can send and receive the data at the same time previously in the network hub it can only either send the data or receive the data but in network switch it can send and receive the data at the same time so if the pc1 want to send a data to pc2 it can use that collision domain at the same time if pc3 send some data to pc1 it can receive as well at the same time without any restriction so that's why the network switches are very faster than network hub now let's come back to the subject wireless access point so what is the concept of wireless access point the wireless access point has the same concept of a network hub it has only a single collision domain so all the devices connected to that wireless access point can either send or receive the data at the same time it cannot send and receive at the same time same like a network switch so basically the wireless access points are similar to network hub only the difference is wireless access point doesn't have the network interfaces it is using the radio frequencies for the data transfer so in this image we can see one wireless access point is here and one printer and one mobile phone and one laptop is connected to the wireless access point so since the wireless access point has a single collision domain among these three devices only one devices can send or receive the data at the same time if two devices try to send at the same time then the collision can happen and they need to wait till clear the data path so wireless access point manage the sessions between multiple devices it provide one session for the laptop and after finish it provide another session for the printer and after that complete it provide another session for the mobile devices so only one session is active in wireless access point and it manage the session between multiple devices connected to that access point now we understand why wireless access point is considered as a step forward in technology and back in efficiency now point number 5 wireless access points follow the wi-fi standards 802.11 so what is this wi-fi standards and it is using for what let's discuss that Wi-Fi standards 802.11 IEEE 802.11 is the Wi-Fi standard introduced in 1977 these standards are the basic for the Wi-Fi wireless networks and represent the world most widely used wireless computer networking protocol so there are multiple wireless standard introduced in different years let's discuss about that the first one is 802.11b or Wi-Fi 1 which is introduced in 1999 and operated in 2.4 gigahertz as a single carry design then there was 802.11a or wifi 2 was also introduced in 1999 was the successor to the IEEE 802.11b it support multi carrier modulation scheme it supported 5g operation with 20 megahertz bandwidth then 802.11g or wifi 3 this was introduced in 2003 it provided the data transfer rate of 54 megabit per second then 802.11n or wifi 4 it was introduced in 2009 with up to 600 megabit per second data rates then 802.11ac or wifi 5 it was introduced in 2013 to support data rates up to 3.5 gigabit per second it was a first wifi standard to enable the use of multiple input multiple output that's called mamo technology so that the multiple antennas could be used on both sending and receiving the devices to reduce the error and boost the speed then 802.11ax or wifi 6 which was introduced in 2021 with the data rate of 9.6 gigabit per second so the latest technology we are using at this moment is wifi 6 which is introduced in 2021 now the research and development is going on to introduce the wifi 7 which is still under r&d status once it is tested and success then we will get a new wifi standard that is called the wifi 7 so these are the different wifi standards used by the wireless access point now let's see how a wireless access point can be identified from a network diagram So in this screen we can see the wireless access point symbol by using these two symbol we can identify a wireless access point in a network diagram now it is the time to wrap up this chapter so in this chapter we have understood the primary purpose and functions of a wireless access point we have discussed about the different wifi standards 
Thank you for watching and subscribe to the channel for more videos.